Tonight we're going to be talking about structuring your day and how to get started. Hey Clive, lovely to have you with me. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for your message from earlier. Yep, it's great to have you with me on this one. I know we'll miss you on the next one. Hey Dave. Uh, so I need to say thank you to Michael for this. He gave me, I earlier asked my group of people what's something I should talk about. Um, and they all thought about it and thought, no, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But then Michael popped me an email and said, actually, this would be really good. And what he said in his email was, how do people structure their days, structure their eating? And particularly when they're moving from the standard medical advice, so eating carbs, you know, I've had so many diabetics that have been told to eat snacks, so actually to eat six meals a day, three main meals, and to eat in between. Um, they're given all this conflicting advice. They're told that actually they need to eat carbohydrates, but they need to eat brown bread and brown rice and, and new potatoes and things like that, but they must still eat carbs. So how do you transition from that to basically the complete opposite, which is low carb, high fat? Um, and I actually thought that's a great suggestion. So we're going to unravel that now. Um, so one of the first things to do is don't believe me, don't trust me, don't believe anything you see on the internet, test yourself. So the first thing before we start changing what you eat, before you start grocery shopping and looking through your cupboards and seeing what's, how much sugar is in things, um, is a testing kit. The first thing you need to do or use or buy is a testing kit. Now, it doesn't need to be expensive. Um, you know, most places under 20 pounds or under 20 US dollars or wherever you are in the world, you'll be able to get a reasonable kit with a large number of strips. So testing is the most important thing. Uh, everyone's individual and for some people, foods that will cause spikes in sugars won't do that for other people. Um, so that is your first thing. And before you change your diet at all, get a baseline. So see what happens at breakfast. See what your fasting sugars are like in the morning. So that is by fasting, I mean when you've gone overnight without eating. Now, um, if you haven't already, watch some other videos on uh, my YouTube channel that talk about why fasting blood sugars are high and why most of the time it has nothing to do with what you've eaten. And those are the most... Uh, Stubborn sugars, they're the ones that take the longest to come down. So, you know, do your fasting sugar, see what your sugars go up to an hour, between an hour and two hours after eating. So you know where you're at at the moment. Then you can do some testing. Then you can move to low carb, high fat. So what would that look like? So instead of cereal and healthy granola or muesli or oatmeal or porridge, it would be bacon and eggs. So check your sugars. And actually, there's a great post um, that Shelley made. Uh, she had an, she'd uh, sorted out so much of her diet. Sugars were going great. Um, and uh, But they were still a little bit stubborn. She was struggling to get them down the last bit. And then we realized that there were still carbs in her diet, healthy carbs, and those were what causing the problem. So, but she took my advice. So I said, don't trust me, test it. Um, and she did, and the difference was dramatic. You know, when she ate her healthy, low-fat, um, lots, lots of fiber, healthy granola breakfast, um, her sugars were going up uh, well above normal. And the next morning when she did bacon and eggs, they stayed with a normal range. So that's one of the first things. If you're testing, you can see exactly what's going on. Um, so do that and then what we're looking to do is get all carbs out of your diet because if we go for getting all of them out, there'll always be some that sneak in, um, but you'll be getting out the majority. And that means all carbs. So one of the common traps is that we know where most carbs hide. So we know that anything with sugar in is carbs. We know that pasta and rice and potatoes are carbs. Um, you know, cakes and donuts and ice cream, we know they're all carbs, so that's quite straightforward. What usually catches people out is the hidden healthy carbs that we've been told forever are great for us. So that is things like porridge and oatmeal, beans, lentils, pulses. Yes, they are healthy foods, um, but you are carbohydrate intolerant, so not necessarily healthy for you. So test and check and measure. Uh, even things like carrots and peas, 
actually hides a lot of carbs. And a really common one that catches people out is fruit. Now, there's a reason that, um, what is it, there's um, zoos in Australia that have had to remove fruit from um, a lot of their zoo animals' diets because it's causing obesity and uh, their teeth are rotting because these aren't uh, fruits that you would normally find in nature. We have selectively bred them over the years to taste yummier and sweeter. Um, so the sugar content in them now is out of all proportion to what they would have been in nature. So a banana is about five teaspoons of sugar. A pear is about the same. Apples are about four teaspoons of sugar. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so those kind of things can really catch you out. Also, because we've been told for years they're healthy. And if you're carb tolerant, yes. If you're carb intolerant, which is what being diabetic is, then no. You know, healthy doesn't mean healthy for you. Um, and Debbie's just put up a good, mess a good message. I'll come back to that. And things like orange juice. You know, we're told for ages, it's fruit. It's the juice of fruit. It's good for us. Um, but actually, orange juice has the same amount of sugar um, as Coca-Cola um, and sometimes even slightly more. So, you know, we wouldn't dream of having Coca-Cola or cereal for breakfast in the morning. Uh, but we have no problem having a little bit of orange juice. And the problem as well is that orange juice, they used to say it was three fingers. So it used to be three fingers um, in a tumbler and that was it. So small portions, but obviously our portion control is not what it was. We're eating much more portion wise. So three fingers of orange juice served with a glass of water is, you know, would have been standard in a small tumbler. But now we can drink 300 mils of the stuff, you know, half a pint. That's half a pint, isn't it? Um, which you're getting so much sugar straight into your bloodstream and actually so much so that orange juice uh, is one of the things recommended to give a type one diabetic when they're having a hypo because it gets sugar straight into their bloodstream. Um, so yeah, so be aware of those hidden carbs. Now if your sugars aren't behaving themselves and they're still high, uh, you know, an hour after you test them, there was something that you ate that caused the sugars to go up. Now what I will tell you, in the first few days, the first seven days, you will experience carbohydrate craving. That is completely normal. I promise you it gets better with time as the carbohydrates work their way out of your system. And don't forget they are, that we have really good evidence that they're chemically addictive. So what I mean by that is that your rewards you for eating them and encourages you to do it again. Exactly. You will feel cravings. You will want those food for the first, generally the first seven days. Um, once you've got through that period, the cravings decrease and the choices are a lot easier. Um, so in the transition, we do not want to do any deprivation. So for the first three weeks, all we are doing is flushing the carbs from your system and do that with delicious food that happens to be low carb. So, you know, raspberry, strawberry, smoked salmon, steak, bacon, eggs, sausages, you know, all of those kind of delicious foods that accidentally are low carb, you can enjoy without any issues. There are a lot of low carb products coming on the market now, including low carb bread. Um, I would um, ask you to be a little bit cautious about in the early days about you know buying low carb ice cream and things like that because you're still feeding the sweet tooth so you, know, you can do that kind of thing a little bit but just be aware if you're transitioning from one type of sweetness to another um, and just give your body a little bit of time to get used to it so debbie says i'm getting suspicious of whole wheat for me even the wraps that are only five grams of carbs yeah so one of the things that um, people can find when they go low carb is that you're kind of accidentally getting rid of some things that your body might find hard to deal with. Now, generally, we know that gluten isn't a problem. Uh, however, some people will find that their body does struggle to digest it. So it might not be the carbs, Debbie. It could be the gluten. And some people find that that's an issue um, once they're because you accidentally 
<coughs> excuse me, I should have bought my water. You're accidentally doing an elimination diet. So you're taking out some large food groups and you're taking out a lot of processed food, which means that you can, um, for some people I've worked with, they can identify foods that are causing the problems that they hadn't realized before. And actually gluten is quite common in that mix. People will find that actually gluten doesn't agree with them particularly well. Um, so Michael's saying the same, like you, Debbie, I now have an intolerance to wheat products, yeah. And for a lot of people that improves over time as the bacteria in their gut starts to rebalance, the body obviously becomes less inflamed, you know, being diabetic is an inflammatory disease. Um, so as you're reducing your sugars down, um, changing what you're eating, the body will calm down. So some people find that gluten upsets their stomach initially and over time, they're able to tolerate it better again. Um, but to be honest, on a low carb, high fat diet, it's actually quite a blessing to, um, to be gluten intolerant. It just makes it easier. Uh, and a lot of my people uh, are actually because of, uh, you know, the metabolic changes that insulin resistance causes. Um, so yeah, so that would be the easy way to uh, yeah the easy way to transition to get into your habits. Keep your meals the same. If you want to eat snacks, eat snacks. Most people find that once they get further into it, their um, hunger naturally decreases as you get out of the grip of carbs. You'll naturally find yourself eating less. And you might even say the fateful words of Oh, I don't think I got around to having breakfast, or I. I haven't eaten lunch, and um, which most people when they're eating carbs would never dream of saying. So that actually happens quite naturally as your body gets back into balance. Insulin is a massive driver of hunger. If you're not eating carbohydrates, your insulin levels drop, so your hunger drops as well, which is why low carb, high fat is one of the easier ways to lose weight because you start eating according to hunger, not eating according to cravings. So when you're on the carb train, cravings rule the roost. When you're low carb, high fat, your hunger, your natural hunger in your stomach rule the roost. So for most people, they find they naturally lose weight. And I've even got some people in which we have to put systems in place to stop them losing any more weight um, because their, you know, their appetite isn't what it was. And so they actually need to eat a little bit more to maintain their weight. So the way to transition, test your sugars. And decadence. You want to be a decadent low carber. So cream cheese, double cream, whipped cream, uh, you know, all the lots of lashings of butter, you know, the deli section with all the lovely salamis and sausages and stuff, all the things that you generally felt you were being naughty eating, eat that. <laughs> and uh, you know, and eat when you're hungry and just let your body naturally sort itself out because that's what will happen when you get off the carb craving train. Um, and on that note, I shall say good night. I shall see you lovely people next week. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, there will be a link in the comments so you can join me live on these webinars. You know the deal, subscribe, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate all of that. And if you've got questions, leave me a comment and I will come back to you. And on that note, I shall say good night, lovely people, and I shall see you next week. Bye for now.